Starting from this video, I'll explain how the Unisol B3 fee algorithm works. So for the first video, I'll explain how to calculate fees. Imagine that on the vertical axis, we graph the liquidity, and on the horizontal axis, we graph the price. Let's say that the current price is over here. To the right of this current price, all liquidity will be in token X, and to the left, all liquidity will be in token Y. Let's also say that Alice has S shares of liquidity from here to here. And Bob swaps some amount of token Y, DY, for some amount of token X, DX. Let's say that this swap shifted the current price from here to here. So active liquidity was over here. And after the swap, let's say that the active liquidity is over here. Since the token that came in was token Y, fee is collected on token N, which is equal to token Y. We'll say that the amount of fee that was collected in L0, the total amount of fee that was collected in L0 when Bob did a swap is F0. And the amount of fee that was collected inside of liquidity L1, we'll call this F1. And again, both F0 and F1 are in token Y, since these are the tokens that came in. So in this single swap, remember that Alice has S shares in a liquidity that is shaped like this. Let's calculate how much fee Alice now gets from this swap. What we're going to calculate is the amount of fee that Alice earned for providing liquidity. Let's call this F. F will be the total fees earned by Alice. And this will be equal to F0. This is the total amount of fees that was earned from Bob swapping in liquidity 0. And how much of this F0 should Alice be able to claim? Well, it will be the amount of liquidity that she owns in L0. The total liquidity that she earns inside L0 is S. And the total liquidity for this L0 is L0. So in this liquidity L0, fee that was generated was F0, and Alice gets to have a portion of it, and the portion will be S divided by L0. Okay, and we do the same for F1. The total fee that was collected is F1. The amount of liquidity that she has in this position is S. And the total liquidity in L1 is L1. From F1, the total amount of fee that was generated in this swap in the liquidity L1, Alice gets a portion of S divided by L1. And this is the total fee that was earned by Alice in this swap. This is the total fee that was earned by Alice when Bob did a swap. This was a single swap. But what is the equation when there are multiple swaps? So we'll come up with a general equation for the total fees that was earned by Alice. After she provides some liquidity, there will be some multiple swaps. And over time, what is the amount of fee that Alice earned? To answer this question, let's come up with some variable names that incorporate time. We'll define Li of t to be equal to liquidity in tick i at time t. Now, why do we need to incorporate time? Well, this is because liquidity changes over time. People put in liquidity and people withdraw liquidity over time. And we also define f of i of t to equal fee of token y collected in L of i of t. In other words, this is the fee of token y that was collected inside liquidity at tick i at time t. Okay, so let me give you an example of what I mean here. For example, let's say at time t equals 0, we have a liquidity that looks like this. And let's also say that Alice provided this much liquidity in between these ticks. You'll say that this is tick 0 and this is tick 1. At t equals 0, someone did a swap, and this shifted the active liquidity from tick 0 to tick 1. This collected F0 of 0 for fees on liquidity 0, and F1 of 0 at liquidity 1. At t equals 1, let's say that the liquidity has changed, and this is because some people added more liquidity, and other people have removed liquidity. However, let's say that Alice has not changed their position, so her liquidity is what's shown in pink. It has not changed since time t equals 0. A swap caused the price to move from tick 1 to tick minus 2. So the active liquidity shifted from L1 to L of minus 2. Since we defined F of i of t to be the fee collected on token y, the amount of fee that was collected here is equal to 0, since the token that came in is token x and not token y. We only collect fee on token that comes in. So in this case, fee collected from L1 all the way to L minus 2 at each of these liquidity is equal to 0. F of i of 1 is equal to 0. At t equals 2, again, liquidity changed. However, Alice's position remains the same. A swap for token y to token x caused the price to move to the right. 
the active liquidity shifted over from L of minus 2 to L of 0. This collected a fee of F of minus 2 at liquidity L minus 2, F minus 1 at liquidity minus 1, and F0 at liquidity 0. Notice here that in this example, the variables L of IoT and F of IoT are indexed by the tick position and also by time. Okay, so what is the general equation for the total amount of fees earned by Alice from t equals 0 to t equals 2? Alice provided S liquidity, showing pink, swap collected fee of F I of t from liquidity L I of t at time t. To answer the question how much fee did Alice earn from time t equals 0 to t equals 2, we ask a simpler question first. What is the amount of fee that Alice earned at t equals 0? What is the amount of fee that Alice earned at t equals 1? And what is the fee that Alice earned at t equals 2? If we sum all of these up, we should get our answer. So let's try to answer the simpler question, what is the amount of fee earned by Alice at time t? We'll call this f of t. And what is this equal to? Well, going back to our first example, we can see that the fees earned in this example was f0 times s divided by l0 plus f1 times s divided by l1. So if we replace this variable with the variables over here, then we should get a general equation for the amount of fees that Alice earned at time t. So scrolling down, here's the general equation for fee earned by Alice at time t, f of t, will be equal to the sum of fees collected in between the ticks, f of i of t, and then we multiply this by the ratio of amount of liquidity that Alice has at L of i of t. Now since s is a constant inside this summation, we can pull this out to here, and then just bring this over to the top. And this will be the equation that we'll be using for f of t. And now we can answer the question, what is the total amount of fees earned by Alice from time t0 to so let's say some t, t of n. We'll call this f, and f is equal to, all we have to do is take the sum from t equals to t0 to all the way up to tn, and we sum up this equation, f of t. And this will be the total amount of fees earned by Alice from t0 to tn, and here we're assuming that Alice's liquidity is a constant s. Now before we go, take a look at this equation over here. Why did I rearrange this equation to look like this? Well here s is a constant, so this means that if we track this expression, then we'll be able to calculate fees for any users. This is the same trick that is used in the synthetics staking rewards contract. I'll end it here for this video, I'll see you in the next one.